Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. We've got a spectacular show lined up here. We have uh, a brother, Steve Fletcher, who is uh, one of the, uh, I believe, one of the expert researchers and a watchman on the wall who's been warning, I don't know how many years, that the time draws very, very close at hand. And, uh, of course, he gets uh, nailed from time to time, and everybody else does. Hi, Steve. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. It's such an honor to be here with you guys. Thanks, Stuart and Larry, for having me. Oh, no problem. And we got Larry on board. How are you doing down there, Larry? Oh, we're having some thunderstorms, but I'm ready to see where this show goes. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. <laughs> Okay, uh, Steve uh, has been doing this for quite a while now, and uh, I, I want him to uh, tell us how he got called into this uh, and, and his ministry down there in Mexico and, and how all this is uh, working, because a lot of this stuff that Steve digs up, nobody else would ever dig it up. And it's very, very fascinating how all the numbers and everything else are beginning to work out. And uh, don't forget that tomorrow is uh, Obama's speech, and I guess it's he's got quite a quite a lineup of other people. But I'm very, very suspicious, and I know uh, that Steve is, and I know Larry is of Obama. Uh, who is this guy? And what role does he play in the last days? And we're beginning to focus down on some of that. So anyway, Steve, could you kind of enlighten us on how all this came about, why you got into it, et cetera, et cetera? Sure, I'd love to do that. Um, well, I'm from Minnesota originally, and I came down to Mexico at, at the age of 23 as a missionary I actually got saved in high school at 16, and after, uh, you know, during my high school years and then after high school, I went to Bible college. I did two years at Bible college, and uh, I really started seeking the Lord about, you know, His will for my life. Basically, right away as I got saved, I, I really felt the call to be a missionary and understood that, you know, the life of sacrifice and service and really just living everything for the Lord. And uh, it was during during that time that I was in college, I was, uh, I took a time to fast and pray, right? I, I took a time to fast and pray, and, and uh, I was seeking the Lord for my future. And mm-hmm. uh, the, Lord spoke, the Lord spoke to me about Mexico and, and uh, coming down to Mexico. And that's, you know, when I ended up coming down here, it was, you know, just through the guidance of the Lord and, and all that. And then before I came down here, I was on a, you know, I went, uh, I received a type of, uh, it, it was like a, a revelation or some type of a prophecy, but it was, it was something that was confirmed to me uh, ahead of time because one morning we, I was getting ready for church. This is, you know, Sunday morning, I was like 20, 22, I think. And I was getting ready for church and I, I was praying over the service, praying for the pastor, praying for the message and just for the move of the spirit. And the Lord impressed upon me. Um, just, I had this feeling whether it was a vision or not. I can't, I can't remember exactly how it was, but I, but the Lord showed me what was going to happen at church that morning. And this is, you know, key to how I ended up, you know, coming into this. So this is why I'm explaining this, that that morning there was going to be a guest pastor and that he was going to call me up, you know, during his ministry, he was going to call me up to the, to the altar, and he was going to ask me a, a specific question. You know, what do you want from the Lord? And, and it was like, well, the first thing I thought of was, I, I need a car. You know, I'm 22, and I'm in college, <laughs> I need a car. Well, but then, you know, it was like this, this Solomon moment where it's like God's, God's letting me know ahead of time that I can ask for anything that I want. And I, I, I best think about it. 
you know, thoroughly and ask the correct question or the, or the correct desire and not okay. waste it on something temporal, you know. And so I knew what I was going to ask. I knew what was going to happen. And I went to church, and it was exactly as I saw. And so when the pastor told me the answer, the, you know, when the minister told, he told me the answer, uh, I knew in my heart that, that was, it was a word from God because he had shown me ahead of time how this was going to come about. So I asked the pastor, you know, he said, what do you want from the Lord? Exactly what I, you know, the question I knew he was going to ask me. And I said, I want the, the, word, of the, I want the word of the Lord for my life. And he said, uh, well, one, one day you're going to bring a prophetic word to a nation. And, wow, you know, I was a 22-year-old kid. I hadn't even started off my missionary life yet. And it took a long time. I mean, I got back into this and this, uh, you know, speaking prophetic words to a nation when I was about 45, you know, 12, 7, 8 years ago. But okay. that's something, because because I had received such a powerful revelation from the Lord, and I knew it was something that would be fulfilled, I prayed about it, you know, at least once a year, I'd go on a fast, I'd say, Lord, okay. you know, what about this, when is this going to happen, and so, basically, it was in 2012 that I was watching what was happening at the United Nations. It was uh, September, and it was the United Nations, and the, the president of Iran was speaking at the United Nations, I'm a bit of job, and he had the main floor, and he was giving the explanation of the coming Mahdi. Okay, he was, he was revealing to the world and to the United Nations the coming Mahdi, the one, and he, he there's a, a blog that was done by Joel Rosenberg. If you want to find this and understand this, but Ahmadinejad lays out how the 12th Imam uh, Mahdi is going to come, and he, he explained that he comes in the spirit of a girl. And it was this was a huge wake-up call to me that we were – we were approaching the end times, okay? And so because, because I had previously received a word about my future and about bringing a prophetic word to a nation, and now I hear this, this was a wake-up call to me. So my, my wife and I went on a 40-day fast, not con continuously. We did Monday through Friday and then took the weekends off. We did that for eight weeks, for two months, Right, mm -hmm. and and through through that two months we had a forty day time of fasting, and it was during that time of fasting the Lord began revealing to me about the feast days, Hanukkah, and the Lord began showing me how I would receive my sign. I received a sign in the sun on December twelfth, two thousand twelve. The sign in the sun came at midnight. Now the Lord revealed all this stuff to me. He said. Um, you know, through the word, just through the word, he gave me clues as to how to understand the day, the time, and the hour. You know, the, the, the week, the day, and the hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he showed me when, when, you, when you see the abomination of desolation according to Daniel. Okay, so the abomination of desolation originally back in the time of the Maccabees, that was Hanukkah. Okay, yeah. and, then the, and then the abomination happens midweek. So there, I have two clues already. The the uh, Hanukkah midweek. Then he revealed the hour to me from the ten virgins midnight. So in 2012, this is the interesting thing about this. In 2012, Hanukkah, the dates on Hanukkah were December 8th through December 16th. So midweek Hanukkah was December 12th. Mm -hmm. And it was 2012. It was 2012. So what we have then is we have 12, 12, 12. Plus, the Lord gave me the time, which was midnight, which is another 12. Okay? But then I, I had to understand that Israel is God's clock. So if we're looking at midnight in Israel, it's 4 p.m. my time in Yucatan. And, and where I'm in Yucatan, Mexico, it's 4 p.m., uh, Central time to 12 midnight Israel time. And exactly at 4 p.m. here in Yucatan, I received my sign, and the sun was transformed for 75 minutes. 
I had 20 witnesses with me on my roof, and we saw the sun transformed, and we could look directly at the sun, all of us, for 75 minutes. Wow. The sun, the sun uh, got big. It got small. It, it turned colors. It was spinning like a globe. Uh, there were uh, out of the clouds coming behind the, behind the, the sun, there were uh, bubbles and, and all kinds of different colors. And then, and then once that sun came uh, out from behind the clouds, it just, I was asphyxiated, you know, asphyxiated on it. And mm-hmm. the Lord, the Lord began to, uh, you know, gave me my call. That was like my burning bush, right? That was like right. my burning bush. And he gave me, he gave me a message and it's called the sign of his coming revealed. And, um, from there, from there, you know, it was like a hundred days later that uh, the abomination happened. Now, the, the whole deal with the abomination, how to understand March 22nd, 2013, was, you know, through the work of Dewey Bruton and his understanding of the, of the Daniel timeline, and even five years earlier to the, to the day of Obama's visit to, to uh, Israel, Dewey Bruton had predicted the date of the abomination based on just the written word how it would work. And um, so the timeline of Dewey Bruton was very key. And uh, Rene Moses also gave some amazing understanding to this situation because the, um, the church of the nativity, the church of the nativity is the, is the, uh, is the fortress, you know, it's the temple fortress. It's the, fort- it's the sanctuary fortress, right? Mm-hmm. That's the way Daniel describes it. And that was taken by force 11 years prior by the Palestinians. And so it, it talks about the, the, the abomination and the place of the abomination. It was a, a sanctuary fortress that was taken by force. And then the people that took it by force brought in the abomination. And so it was that the Palestinians ended up bringing Barack Obama into that because they own it. You know, it was given to the Palestinians by UNESCO after the siege took place. Mm-hmm. So if we oh. go, I mean, there's a whole there's a whole uh, list of things there. But I mean, my call started way back when I was 22. I'm 52 now, so 30 years ago. And then uh, I received my my official call and beginning of this portion of my ministry in 2012. Mm -hmm. What led you to suspect Obama? I've suspected him for a long time, and I I know Larry has has too. Who is he? We don't even know who he is. How did you come to that conclusion? Then we can get into some of this stuff. Are you familiar with the Kenyan prophecy? Let me read that. Let me read it to you. It's very short. It was made in 1912. And the fellow who did it was uh, Nomia Luo Church. Uh, He was considered a uh, prophet, Uh, Uh much like Muhammad, I guess, in his land. And he was in Kenya. This is what he had to Uh say. So far have they, the United States, strayed into wickedness in those future times that their destruction has been sealed by my father. Their great cities will burn. Their crops and cattle will suffer disease and death. Their children will perish from diseases never seen upon the earth. And I reveal to you the greatest mystery of all, as I have been allowed to see that their land, the United States' destruction, will come about through the vengeful vengeful hands of one of our very own sons. And, of course, that's Obama. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Larry, got any questions before we go further? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Steve knows who Matreya is and any background of Matreya, but um, it's odd that 
that uh, Obama met Maitreya in Kenya, and then uh, also uh, from that time forward, Maitreya was never seen again, only Obama. Are you familiar yeah, with Maitreya? I've, I've read about Maitreya, but I was never um, really convinced if it was a real you know, real person or if it was just a myth, a mytholo- you know, mythological story passed down through the ages. Uh, sure. No, that's a real story because one of the, um, well, she was, uh, what was her name, Larry? She got visited by Maitreya. Yeah, and Kathleen they have pictures Keating. Of him. Yes. That was, her name was Kathleen Keating. Can you, uh, do you remember what happened to her, Larry at all? Yeah, after Maitreya, who was brought to her house by a general, a U.S. general, and she refused him entrance, she became very ill, and uh, she was sick until I'm not. I don't even know if she's still alive. I don't think she is now. But uh, this was a. It was back in a period of time that Maitreya was uh, going to be revealed. They said, and Benjamin Cream was a guy that really was his spokesman, if you will. And she met with him. She wrote some books about all of this, and uh, she was a prolific writer. She was Catholic, but she did write a lot of books warning about actually incoming objects and things such as that and a dark time, uh, three days of darkness. But uh, what was so interesting was the fact that Maitreya was, no, you know, he was actually seen in Kenya at the same yep. time Obama was in Kenya, and then suddenly – he vanished from his, the scene, supposedly, and his, Benjamin Krim died, who was his spokesman. And since Obama took office as president, we've never seen or heard of uh, Maitreya again. Yeah, I have a picture of Maitreya. It was taken in Kenya. He's very, he, in the, he, very tall, extremely tall. He was kind of towering over everybody else in the crowd. But he's a fallen angel, is who he is. And a very powerful one, evidently. Well, of course, they're shapeshifters. But what I'm interested in, Steve, is you did some research on the uh, Ramadan, and there's some talk in there for the 16th, for tomorrow, and about the fallen ones, or one could say maybe it's a spiritual uh, descent of darkness, uh, could you get into that for us? Because you've done the research on it. I, I w- I'd like to, um, I want to just lay two minutes or, or, or a few minutes of groundwork. It, it's kind of hard for those that come in off the, uh, you know, if, if somebody's hearing that Barack Obama could possibly be the Antichrist for the first time, and then, you know, how does that fit into the actual biblical timeline, could it be possible? Um, So I just want to explain some things that the Lord has shown me. And I I just want to uh, kind of lay that groundwork for those who want to do some more, you know, Bible study and and really understand it biblically, okay? This is what the Lord has shown me, and and this is what I'm going to share, okay? So Matthew chapter 24, Jesus gives us the signs of his coming, okay? And... You know, people get into, is this for the Jews or is this for the, you know, for the Christians? And, well, Jesus was talking to his disciples. He wasn't talking to the public. He wasn't talking to the crowds. He was talking to his disciples alone on the Mount of Olives. And he said to them in verse 15, when you see the abomination of desolation, according to the prophet Daniel. Okay? So this is like a sign of, of his coming. And so... What we get in the book of Daniel, then, is the timelines. First of all, I mean, it starts out in Daniel chapter 9, and it says 70 weeks are determined. Now we have what, we, we're, what we're seeing is, the you know, quite possibly, I mean, if there's ever been a time where we feel so sure that this is the, the final timeline, is that the timeline actually does bring us to the Feast of Weeks to Pentecost, which is called the Feast of Weeks. Uh-huh. Shavuot is the Feast of Weeks. So Daniel's giving us a timeline. Seventy weeks are determined. And then he goes and he starts in verse 26. Well, verse 25 says, from the order to restore Jerusalem. So yep. 
it's it's kind of it's kind of like what you say at the beginning of your show. The future can be known if we only know where to look. Yes. Right. Yes. And so I I feel like that's what the Lord has given to me. He's showing me where to look. And so if we go to the order to restore Jerusalem. And if we look at the second coming of Christ, because we have to realize that the abomination of desolation and the timeline of Daniel's 70 weeks, it's a dual prophecy because Jesus said we would see the abomination according to Daniel. And if you go and look at the abomination, it's, a, it's, a, it's within a timeline of the 70 weeks. Mm-hmm. You can't separate the first coming, this portion, and the second coming, this portion. No, it, was, it was all fulfilled at the first coming. And it's all going to be fulfilled at the second coming. And that's why we're right now, right at the 70-year marker from the rebirth of Israel, actually even beyond that. But there are reasons that there have been delays even beyond 70 years. And so from the order to restore Jerusalem, and you have two options there. The the first option is the, the Palestinian partition plan, which was... Uh, you know, November 29th, 1947, and then you have the actual date of the re- rebirth of Israel, May 14th, uh, 1948. And so from 1947 or 1948, it goes on to say in verse 26, Daniel 9, 26, after 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off. And it's, it goes on to say he will make a covenant with many after 62 weeks. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, if we, do, if we do the math, because God has given us the math, it's the timeline has the time frame in it. It has the, the number of days, the number of weeks, the number of years. And so if we go from 1947 and we add 62, it's 2009 is the time that we would look for the covenant. Okay. Now that yep. is the time of Barack Obama coming into power. Now it's also, you know, within this is the understanding of what it says in Luke ten eighteen. In the original Aramaic, when it says, "I," Jesus said, "I saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven." And if you translate that into the original language, it says, "I saw Satan fall." Lightning is Barack. And heaven is Bama. I mean, he gave us the name of the Antichrist in the original language. I saw Satan as Barack Obama. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so we, now we can't say, okay, that's one verse. Now we're just going to throw it up. But, but here's this one deal, one, one lead, this one clue that Jesus gave us. And everything now has been about Obama, and now he's coming back. <laughs> After and that, see everything that I've been sharing since 2012, 2013, is everything 100 percent is the fact that Barack Obama is the Antichrist, and it's the timeline of Barack Obama that's giving us the understanding of the abomination of desolation according to Daniel. And so, anyway. So we've got 2009 can be shown from the order to restore Jerusalem plus 62. Then we have the covenant with many. And see, the Bible says that the, the Antichrist comes in peaceably. Yes. So could the, could the uh, Nobel Peace Prize be the place and the, the, you know, and the avenue for the many to make a covenant with the Antichrist and to bring him in to be the the leader of world peace, because that's what he received. You know, he was to uh, proliferate nuclear weapons and to bring about world peace. Yes, he was. And, 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 he, and when he received his Nobel Peace Prize, he said, I, I'm the only one who's ever received a prize, not for what I have done, but for what I will do. Okay? Which is very strange, you know, by the way. You see how important yeah, you see how important that is. I mean he he did not receive a prize. He received a contract. A deal. Yes. You know, we'll put you into this, but you have to promise us to do this. He made a covenant with them to do this thing. Well, so there there we have and, and the other thing about that is that the Nobel Peace Prize was the seventh day of tabernacles. Right? 
and that's the right. day that Jesus r- revealed himself. It could have been the day of the uh, the actual day of the baptism. Yep, that's right. Jesus. And so, um, and then you have the you know the covenant with many for a week. You have the midweek abomination. 1260 days later, he went to Israel, profaned the birthplace of Jesus Christ, which in the, uh, you know, the other portion of this that is so important for everybody to understand is the fact that everybody's looking for a third temple, but Jesus told us, destroy this temple, and I will rebuild it in three days. Okay? Yes. He was, re- he was replacing the second temple with his body, which is the third temple. Which he also said we were the temple of the Lord. And he was talking about his body, and then Paul yep. goes on and talks about, the, you know, we are the temple, we are the temple, we are the temple. Even in Revelation chapter 11, if people want to look this up, when it talks about the temple and measuring the temple, it goes on in verse 19 of Revelation chapter 11, it says the temple was in heaven. Okay, it wasn't even an earthly temple that they were measuring. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when Paul talks about the Antichrist sitting in the temple demanding to be worshipped, see, what are we talking about? And this is where we are right now because the, the mark of the beast is beginning. I mean, how many, how many things do we need to see to understand that digital vaccinations, contract, contact tracing, HR 6666, everything that is being promoted right now, I mean, we are, we're in Revelation chapter 13, the mark of the beast is beginning. <laughs> yeah, I right. don't think there's any question about that. And this is, you know... And the Bible talks about the, the Antichrist having 42 months to make war with the saints. He does not have seven years. Okay, he has 42 months. That means where, where does the rapture happen? If we're already here right now, where are we? We're, at, we're mid-tribulation. We're, we're, at the, we're at the halfway mark, and there's only a half of the seven years remaining. And there's amazing proofs to that that I've been documenting in my in my last few videos. So these are just some of the, these are just some of the things you know. I mean, if we look at what the temple is, the true meaning of the temple, the sanctuary fortress, the the true timeline of Daniel based on the 70 years starting in, in 1947 plus 62. You know, all of that brought us to 2000, 2016. In 2016, then. I mean, we have an amazing marker that begins the the seven year uh, tribulation, but we're not in the great tribulation, and so the, that's another confusing aspect to this. Is that we, people, you know, people talk about tribulation, but there's two aspects. Tribulation is what we've always had, although we're we're definitely in a heightened time of of tribulation, but the wrath of God. And the great tribulation has not begun yet. That will not begin until after the rapture of the church. Right. Larry, got any questions so far? No, I've been fascinated with uh, some of the points he's putting together there. That's that's really, really interesting. So you're looking at the 1260 from Obama's Peace Prize. You go 1260 days, and you are at the grotto or the holy place for the Christians. Uh, which is yes. what it would be. It would really be the Holy of Holies for the Christian people. It's, and he's standing the there place in a on place earth. he ought not. Is that right? Yeah, it's, a, it's the holiest place on earth. I mean, if you consider any Christian site that exists, because there's no third temple, there's still not a third temple. We're, we're already seeing the mark of the beast, and there's no third temple. So if, if there's a time for people to readjust and maybe reset their doctrines, and their theologies, now would be the time to really reconsider if if they're right or not, because they can fight it all they want, but the reality of what we're living shows us that the the one world government has taken, has already risen with the false prophet, the beast. You know, the beast is not alone. They're looking at Macron. They're looking at uh, Prince William. They're looking at all these things, but the beast is not alone. He's got seven heads and ten horns, right? 
Mm-hmm. So, see, we've got all these things, and, and we're still trying to figure out who Donald Trump is in all of this. He's not the number yeah, one beast, but is he a... Yeah, yeah. Go, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, I mean, he's not the number one beast, but, you know, is he is he one of the horns or one of the heads? And you kind of wonder what side he's going to take. Is he going to come against them? Is he going to end up killed because he's going against the New World Order? But this week, then, he's now uh, saying that there's going to be the forced vaccinations together with the HR 6666 and the door-to-door contact tracing and all that. So what role is Donald Trump going to be playing in all of this? Yeah. Larry, what do you think about that? I, I, no. I, I just don't trust any of them because they're leaders of the world, and Psalm 2 says they don't trust them. So I guess that's where I stand on it. I just watch. Well, I have to say that uh, if you if you just sit back and watch, you know, over the years and have watched a lot of this and how it's worked, we know, uh, you know, I like to use the term, which is not a <laughs> particularly a biblical term, but I use the, name, the the term wild cards, you know, like a deck of cards. There's always some wild cards. And I have always said up till now that uh, Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, you know, as far as I was concerned, were wild cards in the deck. In other words, what I was getting at was the fact that, uh, you know, as all of this begins to go down, they may or may, individually may or may not uh, agree and and actually uh, join in on some of the end time things that begin to happen, uh, you know. And they they work independently of each other. Yet at the same time, you've got a, a global force that is pulling a lot of the strings, but you've got the wild cards that are really slowing this thing down to some degree because of their erratic behavior. So it, it's a it's a puzzle. It, it's it's you know I, I have to say even on what I just said, it's like seeing through a glass darkly. Yeah, it is, and and you know Trump is uh, a quagmire, and he speaks a lot of times in code. So like Steve said, well, you know, who is he? Well, we really don't know. But who's Obama? We really don't know. Now, his grandmother said he was born in Kenya. Uh, the birth certificate that he supplied finally is a total fraud. Uh, we had a sheriff. I don't know if you're familiar with that, Steve, but a sheriff from, uh, where was he from, Arizona. Larry? Arizona. <laughs> yeah, Arizona. It was, it, yes. it, it, yeah, it was our, our POW in, in Arizona. And he took a group of deputies over to Hawaii and they researched it out, and strangely enough, the woman that was involved in that very quickly died after that. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. So what would you make of that? I mean, it's just part of the mystery of Obama that they're trying to hide who he really is. Well, you know, he, he, he's the one. You know, back in 2007... Uh, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey uh, presented him in one of his campaign uh, speeches, the one, he is the one, you know, and so he was presented back in 2007. They've come out in in so many different ways and really proclaimed him to be who he is. Uh, he came out on Newsweek as the god of all things. Remember, yes. uh, he was he was as the, the destroyer, destroyer <laughs> the Shiva, you know. God yep. of all things, he had the world and all the money and all the jobs and all the art, all the technology, everything in his hands, six hands, and uh, the God of all things. He came in one of his speeches um, at the uh, the press conference, the White House press di- dinner. He said uh, he he was not born in a manger. He said he said <laughs> I wasn't born. I just want everybody to know I was not born in a manger. I was sent here by my father, Jor-El, to save the planet Earth. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, who who is, you know, who is Barack Obama? Number one, how many names did he have before he was Barack Obama? Well, and why does right. he have a Social Security number of a dead person? Exactly. <laughs> you know, 
the other the other question that comes in now, we, you know, we, we we got to the covenant. He came in peaceably. That fulfills scripture. The abomination yeah. standing where he ought not fulfills scripture. But then there was another covenant that was made while he was in Israel. See, part of his trip to Israel was not just the grotto and the Church of the Nativity, but there was an alliance that was signed called the Unbreakable Alliance. Now, in Hebrew, Unbreakable Alliance means a covenant of peoples. Okay? Uh Uh-huh. Now, so the Unbreakable Alliance, see, the thing about... Like, like your, you know, the motto of your show, you can know the future if you know where to look. It's like, once the Lord showed me that Barack Obama was the Antichrist, then as I follow what is happening, to be able to see what is happening, you see all of this stuff. But if someone doesn't consider that he could be, or it's impossible that he could be, then they don't pay attention to any of this information. So most people do not even know that there was, there was a contract or a covenant made with Israel in 2013 called the Unbreakable Alliance. The covenant with the peoples, and that sounds extremely similar to what it says in Daniel, a covenant with many, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. well, he he swore to have their back. He swore that he would always protect them, always be with them. He would be, okay... He would be there for them always, okay? Basically putting himself into the place of God. It's like, I will be with you always, right? Right. You know? Well, anyway, it was three and a half years later, in, 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 in December 23rd in 2016, that he broke the covenant when he failed to veto the vote against Israel. See, this is the perfect and exact scenario of what the Antichrist does. He makes an agreement with Israel and then breaks the covenant. Mm-hmm. So, okay. you know, the question the question people have is, okay, if he's the Antichrist, how would Israel ever accept him? Well, they already did, and that's a thing that people don't see. They already signed the agreement. They already had the Unbreakable Alliance. And if you look at the Unbreakable Alliance, March 22nd, 2013, and you go seven years, what happened this year on March 22nd, 2020? Well, it was basically the, the weekend of the solstice, March yep. 20th, March 21st, March 22nd, that the world was locked down based on the pandemic. The pandemic was declared on March 11th, but a report came out on March 20th, which was the exact day of the solstice in, in Israel, that there were more than 70 nations already in lockdown, complete lockdown. Wow. And so... Basically, the covenant with many, you go seven years and you've got, okay, here's the fulfillment of that. The world is locked down. And now it's just the final pieces that are being put into place based on now what we're seeing is this commencement speech. It's interesting that they call it a commencement speech because he's going to commence this new era, this, yeah. new, this new generation, this new, this new age, the new world order, right? Right. And how and how that's connected by 14 days to Pentecost and 66 more days to it's not August. You you, you said in your show that it was August 1st. It actually goes Fourth. right to August 4th. 4th. Yes, his birthday. And August 4th. Well, it's not only his birthday. It's to it's to be out and his birthday together. I mean, yes. it's a double. It's a double sign of the power of the 80-day birthing ritual. Could you get into that Christ. for the people? We could, you know, we're wandering along a little bit, but uh, a lot of people probably don't understand what you're getting at. Okay. Um, let me go through two, two timelines here, two, three, three timelines. The first timeline is the, the one we had already started. We've got the Covenant with Many, which was the Nobel Peace Prize, October 9th, 2009. We go three and a half years to the day on the Hebrew calendar, 1260 days. It's the abomination of desolation. It's the unbreakable alliance. Obama and Israel. March 22nd, 2013. Then if we go 1290 days after that, it's the Feast of Trumpets, October 3rd, 2016. And then, as you said the other day in your show, you know, People have it wrong as far as the, the 1260, 1290, plus the 1,335 days. Yeah. 
Most people look at it as 1260 plus 1290 plus 45 days. But yep. if, we, if we go from the covenant with many, October 9th, 2009, add the 1260 days, Add the 1,290 days, brings us to the Feast of Trumpets in 2016, and if we add 1,335 days to that, it brings us exactly to Pentecost this year, May 30th. Okay, so if we go strictly by the books from the Obama Nobel Peace Prize, the 1,260, 1,290, 1,335 days brings us exactly to Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, May 30th, 2020. Okay. You're right. Okay, so we're watching within everything we're watching. We're watching tomorrow, but we're watching tomorrow as a sign leading to Pentecost in two weeks, May 30th. Now, here's the second thing that I wanted to share. Yeah. Now, listen to this. Those that those that want to understand the timeline of of Noah, this is amazing. This this piece of information right here is amazing. And I'd love to be able to share this with graphics. I'll leave, I'll leave links on your on your show, uh, on your on your blog there, uh, uh-huh. uh, where they can see all of these graphics because the graphics really explain everything. If you go back from May 30th, 2020, you go back 1,290 days. It brings us to November 17th, 2016 which was the day the Revelation 12 sign began as Jupiter was just entering Virgo. Yes. This was the yep. Revelation 12 sign that culminated on September 23rd, 2017, but the beginning marker was November 17th, 2016. And this is on the Hebrew calendar is Chesvan 17, which is the day the flood began. Okay? Wow. That's interesting. Okay. And the yeah, thing is, so I know a lot 12, of people scoffed at that, um, Steve, but um, that conception comment to me proved absolutely that sign was totally legitimate. And that's the thing. that It was confirmed by a conception comment, and then we had the whole world watching September 23rd, which was the actual birth event of that. And that was not the exact time, day of the rapture, you know, but it was a, a, mm-hmm. an amazing sign that was, okay, well, it began, that sign began November 17th, 2016. That is Chesvan 17, the day the flood began, according to Genesis 711. If we go forward 1,290 days, it brings us to Pentecost this year, May 30th. And from Pentecost, if we go forward 1,260 days, because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 that she gave the woman a place, to go yes. into the wilderness for 1260 days. It also says that the Antichrist has been given power to make war with the saints for 42 months, which is three and a half years, which is 1260 days. Okay? Right. So if we go forward from May 30th, 2020, 1260 days, it brings us to November 11th, 2023, and on the Hebrew calendar, it's Chess Van 27. It's the day the flood ended. Well, that can't be coincidental. No, I mean, we have a seven-year. Yeah, we have a seven-year timeline with Pentecost right in the middle, and both dates on the beginning and end mark the beginning and the end of the flood. Wow, Larry. That's a. <laughs> yeah, I find that incredibly fascinating. That the time frames there involved. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. That can't be. Well, none of this is coincidental, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why I definitely believe this is this is really it now. This is really it, and that tomorrow is a very important day to be watching. You know, for people who don't know who Barack Obama is and don't believe that he's the Antichrist, it could be dangerous to watch because you might get caught under his spell. You know, because he's a, he's a, you know, Lucifer is a master deceiver, right? Yeah. But for those, for those of us who know who Obama is, we're not going to be, you know, deceived or we're not going to be, um, you know, fall under a spell. The only thing we'll, we'll be able to see is more confirmation and more understanding of the time we are truly living in that we have arrived at the, at the time of our departure. The Antichrist is, is rising, you know. Well, yeah, and I've always thought that I know they're waiting for the temple 
over there in Israel, the third temple. In fact, Trump uh, just recently called rabbis and said, isn't it time to build Trump temple yet? And I guess they put him off for a little while, but um, they've already constructed uh, underground over there. Larry, have you seen those videos about what they have over there with the Sanhedrin rising, which is another sign? Yeah, I've seen the videos. Matter of fact, if you'll remember Richard Shaw, who passed away last year, you know, he uh, went over there and went underground with them and filmed a lot and told us some stuff about it. Uh, what I was going to mention, though, that's kind of interesting, and I don't want to change the subject at all, but uh, I was going to mention, you know, you had the experience where you were shown Lucifer, and yep. you saw what he looked like. And then also after that time, uh, recently, you know, I had an experience where I dreamed a really incredible vivid dream of a rabbi with a big book. It was a, it was a Bible, and uh, he had it open, and he was telling me, and I can't say where it was open at, but I had a feeling it was that in Isaiah. But uh, he was saying, oh, yes, yes. He said, this, is, this shows it right here. This is Obama. And he was really excited about it. And uh, and what's so interesting, too, at the same time frame we're talking, oh, you know, we're aware that the Sanhedrin has been uh, actually trying to get Netanyahu to allow them to do a uh, sacrifice, a living, an actual sacrifice, if you will, on the Temple Mount. And he's rejected that up to this point. They have done two or three sacrifices other places. But uh, Richard Shaw told us, if you'll remember, that a lot of the ground that was original in Jerusalem is underground. It's not on the surface. And that you can you can go to the lo- the original locations in tunnels underground in Israel and under Jerusalem. And so that's what's so interesting is uh, I don't know what Steve would think about the sacrifice that they plan to do uh, or what significance it would have. That's a that's an open question. Well, we might be seeing a repeat for Israel. I'm wondering if it's not a dual timeline to a degree. You know, the church would recognize, would he not, Steve? Would the church not recognize uh, the Antichrist first? Before what? Before the bride is, well, before the church is taken out. Because uh, if you're paying attention to any of the signs, uh, you've got to have some clues, right, as to who he is. For the skeptics, I'm talking to the skeptics out there that, that really don't know. But I had that dream, and he, I was teaching prophecy. And, uh, and he walked and came over to a big smile, dressed to the nines, which he always does. And uh, I, I asked him, I said, you know you're Lucifer, don't you? And he said, yes, I know, big smile, and then I woke up. <laughs> But a lot of Christians have been told that he is the man of lawlessness, the man of sin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And Stuart? Yes. Yes. Uh, Stuart, I just wanted to mention this and get Steve's take on it and yours too, by the way. Uh, you've mentioned it and also Steve about praying and and uh, applying the blood around you, yourself spiritually before you, if you do watch uh, Barack Obama in this commencement, as you're calling it tomorrow, you know I was thinking as you you guys were talking, and I'd like your your opinions on this because number one, we know that whoever Lucifer is, he's very involved, and it really is he uses music. So in this commencement, it's going to be very interesting, and people need to be in prayer about this before they watch it. Be careful at what he says. And be careful at the music that's pr- produced. Yes, mm. Steve. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Who's who's with him tomorrow? I know that on June sixth, he's planning to have Lady Gaga with him. Who's who's in the uh, music groups tomorrow? I'm I'm not sure, you know? but there is music associated with it, and they're almost all Illuminati types. Uh, you know, they sold their soul. There's no question about right. any of that. So. 
but I would agree that if you watch it tomorrow live stream, like uh, uh, Steve suggested, uh, there may be some stuff coming out of that TV set that you don't want to have. Uh, he is very mesmerizing, uh, and I think he's also extremely dangerous. He hates Christians, by the way. He made that abundantly yeah. clear when he was in office. What do you think, Steve? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, I watch, I watch what he says, and I, I mean, it's, you know, maybe not everybody needs to watch it, but I, I'll watch it. I'll analyze it. I'll share later what I see. Um, but if something were to happen, like there were to be a, some type of a transfiguration or some type of, you know, incredible revealing moment, I mean, it's something you might want to just to to, to present, you know, to uh, to presence to 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 just be able to witness it, to be able to understand it, to be able to see it. But I would say go in understanding, you know, let's. Let's watch with caution, be, viewer beware, you know, I mean, it's, it's, um, most people say that they wouldn't watch him for, you know, a million dollars, you know, they, all they want to do is vomit when he comes on the TV, you know, and that's yep. fine. I understand that. It's not like I like him and I want to see what he's going to say because it cheers me up or anything, you know, it's just that, <laughs> you know, yeah, if, you know. If, if, you know, if he's the Antichrist, right? And, yep. and there's going to be some type of revealing moment. Now, if we look at Second Thessalonians chapter 2, a lot of people are confused about this. But if we read this together, let's read Second Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. It says, Now we okay. beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, it just told us what day he's talking about, the day of Christ. It also said in verse 1, our gathering unto him, which is the, the rapture of the church. Okay. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the day of Christ and the rapture of the church shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay? He who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, so this is why the people say that the Antichrist can't be revealed yet because there's no third temple. But if, the, but if they're wrong on that, and Jesus told us exactly what the temple was, that it's us, that we're the body of Christ, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, then what is this? That would be the mark of the beast, which is already beginning now, he's wanting to sit in the temple and reign by them giving worship and accepting a mark in their temple, in their body. See, that is the Antichrist sitting in the temple proclaiming to be worshipped, you know, uh, demanding to be worshipped. And it goes mm -hmm. on, and it says, remember, remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things? Now you know that with, what withhold of him, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth work, doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume. So what I see in this passage, as I study it from beginning to end, trying to understand all of the context, is that the man of sin will be revealed before the rapture, and then after the rapture, he will be fully revealed, which means he will manifest. He will be Satan incarnate. He will be uh, possessed by Lucifer, the host body that has been prepared for the Antichrist. That is the full manifestation. That will obviously happen after the rapture. But it says the day of the Lord will not come except that the man of sin be revealed first. Okay, so right. and for the yeah, well, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, what we're ahead. watching, we're, we're watching the this birth ritual. Okay, I shared I shared about this birth ritual. Yes. Now, the 80 re, days. remember what? I, yeah, remember what I said um, 
at the beginning of the show when I talked about the speech that the Iranian president made at the United Nations about the 12th yep. Imam Mahdi coming in the spirit of a girl? Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. so that that's something that stuck with me as far as the way the Antichrist or the, the Muslims would would re, um, would um, expect or understand who their Mahdi is, that he comes in the spirit of a girl. And so we have, uh, you know, the, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, when he was born, he fulfilled a 40-day birthing ritual. It was after seven days, he was uh, dedicated, he was circumcised on the eighth day, and then he was brought into the temple on the 40th mm-hmm. day, right? And, the, and, yep. and the, the mother is clean. After 40 days, the mother is declared clean. And for the, for the female, you have an interesting detail. This is written in Leviticus chapter 12, verse 5. The whole birthing ritual talks, the first four verses are about the male. But then in verse 5, it talks about the female. And the interesting detail is that when the female is born, there's an 80-day birthing ritual, but it's divided into 14 plus 66 days. <laughs> and that's, that's, always, that's always struck me that why is the woman connected to the number 66? And it's not only 80, but it's 14 plus 66. Okay, and so what we have is, you know, I've always connected this to the birthing ritual of the Antichrist. And, you know, Jesus, Jesus came and he was born of a virgin, right? Yep. He was born of a virgin and, and uh, you know, was born in the birth, you know, in, in the uh, Church of the Nativity, in Bethlehem, and and he fulfilled the forty days. Well, the the Revelation twelve sign is is about another birth. It's a, it's a, it's another birth in the heavens of the you know the the woman being crowned with the sun, being yeah. with the, the moon at her feet, twelve stars on her head, and then it, she's in pain to be delivered. Right. Yep. So it's another it's another virgin birth, but it's obviously not talking about Jesus because Jesus even said to Nicodemus, you know, you can a man enter into his mother's womb twice, right, and be born? He said, no, you must be born again, right? Yep. So Jesus didn't the, the the Revelation 12 sign wasn't the second coming of Jesus. It's, it's connected to the dragon. It's connected to the arrival of the Antichrist. And then it's the rise of the beast. Revelation 12 is the dragon, Satan being cast out onto earth. And then it's the beast. And it's the, you know, it's the fallen angels. It's the mark of the beast. It's, it's, it's the wrath of God that is coming after the Revelation 12 sign. And so we have a birth event that took place. But now we're coming to, okay, May 30th is the 1,335 days from the Feast of Trumpets. It's 1,290 days from the beginning of the Revelation 12 sign. And so what we're watching right now, we're watching on May 16th, okay, this commencement. It's a commencement yep. speech. And we can connect this to the, uh, the day on the uh, Hebrew calendar, which is the day that it was the day of man arrest. It was the Sabbath when they weren't supposed to go out into the wilderness. And they weren't supposed to uh, uh, gather, they weren't supposed to go out and try to gather manna because there was not going to be any manna because God gave them a double portion the night before, right? Right. This is the, this is the day on the Hebrew calendar, it's tomorrow. And it's also the night of power in Ramadan, which is the ninth month and the 23rd day of Ramadan. So it's a 923 on the Islamic calendar. And 923 is the same date as the Revelation 12 sign. That's another aspect. What the, what the Muslims would expect on the night of power, a night of peace, it was the night that the Quran was sent by the angel Gabriel, according to them. And okay. Muhammad received the Quran from the angel Gabriel. And it's the night that they would expect their, their Messiah, maybe, or their, or their Mahdi, or the, or, the, or the declaration of peace throughout the world that they would expect. And then you have the fact that it's the International Day of Light. 
and being an angel of light. You know, Satan is an angel of light, right? Right, yep. And they always so, portrayed okay, Obama 16, that way. Yeah. And, and May 16th, then, is 14 days to Pentecost. Remember, the birthing ritual is 14 days plus 66 days. So uh-huh. May 16th, is all of those things that we've mentioned. It's the I Pet Goat 2 shows Obama in a graduation cap. Then you show, then it's shown the apple is rolling, and it's rolling to the feet of Obama, and the, the apple opens yep. to the lotus Lord. flower, which, you know, which means June, which after the rapture, you know, his time might begin in June then, right? Yeah, who knows? But For sure. Yeah. But, but so it might be. So uh, this, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, sorry, and then so so from May 16th to May 30th, we've got the 14 days, and then if we go forward 66 days, it lands exactly on his birthday to confirm the 80-day birthing ritual of the Antichrist. And so, oh. what I, what I'm saying what I'm saying is that I think that you know the the most important thing within this is that the blessed day 1,335 on the Hebrew calendar. I think the only day within the Hebrew calendar that connects to 1,335 is the day of Pentecost. Going back 1,335 days is the Feast of Trumpet. And that at any year, on any year, that would be fulfilled. But this year, it connects us with the whole timeline of Obama. And as I said at the beginning, everything I've been sharing since 2012, it's all connected to Barack Obama. So if he left and never came back, then you can throw everything that I've been sharing out because, you know, my prophecies go together with the fact that Barack Obama is going to come back. He is the man of sin. He's the one that's going to be running the show. And that's why he has a program under his name called Obamacare, which the Bible explains as the number of his name. So when you sign up for Obamacare and get a mark in your hand or on your forehead, right, you're uh-huh. getting the number uh-huh. of, of his the number of his name. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> Are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> Who, me or Larry? Oh, Larry. He's been quiet. Yeah. Larry, what do you got? Yeah, very very, very <laughs> fascinating. It it makes you wonder what may be said tomorrow and, and the interesting thing and I'll go back again. Uh, to what I said and reiterated a little bit, maybe in a different way too, is is uh, I, if if he's who we think possibly he is, uh, it'd be very interesting tomorrow to see what he says and how he says it, because he also kind of talks in code, and uh, there could be there could be not only a uh, an outward visible audible message that he gives. But he could also have a secret, a subliminal message that is given. What do you think? Well, let me answer that. When I mentioned connected to the night of power, you know, Barack Obama has spoken in many occasions in Arabic. He came out and said clearly that he was a uh, he was a Muslim. Yeah. He uh, he said he said clearly that he was training the ISIS warriors, that he was the one. They were training them, okay? So he's the, he's the leader of ISIS, which makes him the Assyrian because the ISIS is out of Syria, and the Syrian army is run by the Assyrian, right? Yep. And that's all connected, to, that's all connected in, you know, to the sixth trumpet, which you have a, an army of 200 million men from the great Euphrates River, which is the... Syria. So the Syrian refugee crisis and all the Syrians that are leaving Syria as refugees going out, even Pope Francis at the United Nations called on all the Christian brethren throughout the world to receive their Christian brothers, the Muslims from Syria, right? Trojan horse that is is being there is being prepared for the day and the hour and the week and the year in the year, right? To, To to strike. And so we, we've got this army from Syria, and, and Barack Obama is connected uh, to that. I was going to say something else. I lost my train of thought there. 
Well, he's also uh, got uh, relatives in uh, Ireland, uh, which is oh, you... the claim anyway, where Dan, you know, the, the uh, prophecy in Genesis about he will come out of the tribe of Dan, the Antichrist come out of the, the tribe. And if J.R. Church, I don't know if you're familiar with J.R. Church. He uh-huh. died some time ago, but oh, yeah. he was one oh, yeah. of the, yeah, he was a great researcher. And I remember reading an article he had in Prophecy in the News. I've got to write her and see if I can find it, where he said that he could trace Obama back actually to Israel, King David and King Solomon's lineage. So that being the case, then he fulfills all of it. And the book of uh, uh, Isaiah, chapter 14 and it's interesting, you got the 14 days, and it's Isaiah 14, talks about the king of Babylon being Lucifer. Wow. So, there, you know, here he is, uh, king of Babylon. And, you know, Larry has mentioned a number of times that it doesn't appear that Obama's ever disappeared. <laughs> he moved a couple blocks away from the White House. Yeah, and he said he was going to stay around, and he'd be back if I remember right. Larry, do you remember that? Oh yeah, he 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 never really left. Uh, it's almost like, and remember, uh, you know, I I don't know whether Steve ever watches any secular movies, but one that I watched closely that had a lot of clues leading up to Trump and and the battle, if you will, of uh, the inauguration between Trump and Obama. Uh, was a movie uh, that they put together overseas called The Game of Thrones. And I watched that very clearly because it it has dragons in it. But at the same time, uh, what was so interesting to me was Obama was clearly captivated by The Game of Thrones. And oddly enough, Trump, you know, if you'll remember, uh, throughout really his first three years, he, he referred and used symbology of Game of Thrones and all of his stuff. So this is really, really intriguing where all of this seems to go. Well, it almost seems like Trump and Obama are sort of like the movie Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger. (laughs) Where Schwarzenegger (laughs) is the good guy, and uh, Donnie uh, DeVito plays the the guy that got all the junk DNA. And and it's almost like you're looking at somebody with two heads. Because they're so well, alike like, in so yeah. many ways. What do you think, Steve? I, I was uh, I got tied up on that last question. What was the question that Larry asked that I didn't fully answer? What was your well, last that question, was about, Larry? When... Uh, that that was about basically uh, whether what he said audibly tomorrow would mean as much as maybe what he says subliminally that's hidden tomorrow. Okay. And that's what I – okay, yeah, good. I'm glad we, we went back to that because uh, that's one very important thing that I had mentioned in, my, in, in a previous video. When I talked about the night of power, okay, um, tomorrow is the night of power on the, on the Islamic calendar. And Obama has been given really a world stage, even if it's, if it's a national stage in the United States – but once all the channels are carrying it, that's, that's a worldwide stage there because people are going to be watching that from around the world. So in spite of the fact that all of these things are coming out right now, the mask is coming off like with Obamagate and there's a lot of um, you know, accusations coming out right now. But even, even in spite of all that, Obama's still getting the stage, right? Mm-hmm. And so... My thought is, what if he starts speaking in Arabic and we say, oh, he's just, you know, he's just being nice, friendly to all the races. What if he's giving a war call to to rise up and he's he's showing the Muslims that are part of ISIS and everything else, yeah, who he is, and that it's the time for them to to do their takeover that they've been planning, you know? And so that there, there may be things that we don't necessarily understand, but we need to be conscious of the fact that there could be a lot of things hidden there. So 
if he if he speaks in Arabic, you know, I'm going to study out what he said and what it could possibly mean and try to understand that because he's getting world stage on a very important Islamic night. This could be the night for him to make his war call, call to battle to all the Islamic warriors to to begin, well, you know. Why would well, here's, they... here's a... <clears throat> Yeah, go ahead, Larry. Yeah, I was just going to mention, and I mentioned this to you, Stuart, uh, previously. <clears throat> you know, I, I can't verify it, and I can't tell people that it's absolutely correct, but the rabbis recently, and this is an article from Breaking Israel News, uh, that's breakingisraelnews.com. Uh, they 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 print a lot of what a lot of the rabbis say, and the rabbis are indicating, and and I know I've visited with you about this, uh, Stuart. They they're saying a little bit something odd, and I know you said sometimes there's two timelines or or symbology and and all of that, mm-hmm. but the rabbis are claiming that it's possible. You know, they believe possibly that that uh and I know this goes a little bit against theology uh and I'm I'm not even saying it's true but it's a thought here while we're talking about what he might say uh, but the rabbis seem to feel that Barack Obama is god or representative of god and he will go to war with Trump and who they believe may be magog and this is a from a total different angle of what you know theology is about all of this in the end times but is there a battle that is building between uh, Barack Obama and Donald Trump that's going to begin to play out in the midst of America? And could this be an opening shot or an opening round, if you will, this commencement? Well, the fact that this thing is uh, occurring on tomorrow, which is a 9:23, right? And we have Obama. And the Pope, remember, I think it was in 2015, shaking hands at 920 uh, on 923, and at 923, um, the Revelation 12 sign. Yes, was also, also 923. On, on 923. I mean, when you tie all this stuff together, uh, I, I have often asked the, the question. How many signs do we have to have <laughs> before people begin to wake up as to how close this is? And you made a comment you had on your, your blog about this 923 or tomorrow on their Ramadan calendar. It almost sounds like they are, what is this, an arrival of fallen angels or or is this a spiritual descent that they talk about on Ramadan? Well, it was the day. It was the day that, according to them, the angel Gabriel brought the Quran down. So, if that was like a, a key day within their history, it's also a day that it, it's. Uh, they say that they, the books are opened, and that judgment is cast for uh, the coming year. And so on the last 10 nights of Ramadan, everybody's doing more fasting, more prayers. They're trying to get in the favor of Allah so that Mm -hmm. a good favorable judgment can be cast down to them on the night of power. So when you look at the, 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 the books being opened and the judgment being sealed, that's similar to what I see as like the day of atonement for the, for us, you know, um, mm-hmm. The books are closed. The books are closed, and the, and the fate is sealed for the coming year, and that's why they have ten days. And and here's the the, the comparison: it's the last ten ni- ten nights of Ramadan, leading up to the night of power, and it's also ten days of awe from the Feast of Trumpets, leading up to the Day of Atonement. See the similarities? Yeah, it's almost like they mimic each other. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so, you know, here's another thing if we want to uh, look. This is quite interesting. Uh, 516, which corresponds to the date, May 16th, if we look that up in the Strongs, Mm -hmm. it means worthily or in a worthy manner, but it says worthily 
or as becoming. Becoming. And that's oh, the really? name of Michelle's book, Becoming. <laughs> and and they just wow. put that on Netflix. They just put that out on Netflix, Becoming. And and the the meaning of five sixteen is becoming. <laughs> Yeah, you can't make this Pretty stuff amazing. up. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> wow. So, there. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to um, to say. You know, there's so much to say. Well, yeah, and, and uh, keep going. We've got. Uh, uh, I'm sure Larry's got some questions. My, I, what I'm curious about is, could tomorrow night? Would a kind of a spiritual, um, mesmerizing spirit arrive from above? Well, I th- I think I think that the the arrival of the fallen angels and the spirit of deception and apostasy really fell over the world through the Norway spiral when Barack Obama received his Nobel Peace Prize. I think that was a portal that opened yes. and that it it brought deception upon the earth and that is where the church really fell into apostasy. They started accepting all the doctrines of demons and uh, transgender, yeah, transgender pastors mm-hmm. and gay preachers and the acceptance of all forms of evil within the church that has taken over. So it's the spirit of apostasy and it's the the arrival of the Antichrist spirit that's really taken over. So I think I think as much as, you know, things have already happened, I mean things are just accelerating now and this the, the spiritual powers are really being unleashed. Until until the time comes when it says, like in Second Thessalonians where we read, until the one that, that restrains it will be taken out mm-hmm. of the way, and then the full manifestation. So, I mean, at some point, Satan's like waiting, he's waiting, you know, to, to, to be manifest, but God's in control of the moment, of the day, you know? Yes, because he comes at a time appointed, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wow. Larry, got any questions so far? This is fascinating. Well, I was. Uh, yeah, I don't want to start. Any, I don't want to start any rumors, but uh, I wanted to make a comment on the fact that uh, you know you were talking about how that uh, that he would come in the, uh, the the feminine spirit, if you will, or the female spirit. Uh, you mean that, that, that's, that's why really, he's gay, that, right? That's really yeah. That's really interesting because. Uh, there has been a number of reports, you know, some called rumors, unproved fact, but there's a lot of people that uh, have reported that uh, Barack Obama is a homosexual, and I don't think that's really out there for debate particularly, but uh, that's the feminine spirit. That's a female spirit. And and at the same time, there's also uh, reports of, uh, you know, his so called wife. Yeah, uh, his so-called wife <laughs> actually being a man, a transgender, or whatever, and just so say it, Larry. This is, huh? Just say it. Just say it, Larry. You can say it. <laughs> Don't be afraid. My, Michelle is Michael, and Barack is well. He came out on Newsweek as the first gay president. I mean, he wasn't really hiding anything, right? Yeah. No, no, they openly said it. No. But uh, when it when uh, who was it, Larry, that talked about uh, Michelle, uh, Michael, if you will, and she was dead a little bit later. Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Oh, yeah. 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 So <laughs> and, and and remember also, Stuart. I just I want to remind you that. Barry Rothman has run some really incredible Torah codes out of the Torah that have indicated that the one that might be involved that might actually bring down uh, Donald Trump, according to the Torah codes, would be uh, Michelle Obama. Yeah. Wow. Now, you said he wow. had produced a couple of recent codes that kind of tie into this. 
Do you have those? I'm sure yeah, Steve I've got would it like fr- to hear about it. Yeah, you want to hear it, Steve? Yeah, I do. Yeah, this is really interesting, and, and uh, I, it's uh, Barry Rothman, uh, and uh, he ran a uh, three tour codes beginning on May the 14th, 2020, still under construction, and he titled it Obamagate. Now, he began to run this on May the 14th after the uh, the Flynn revelations, you know, the Michael that Flynn set That was just set up. yesterday. That was just huh? yesterday, 14th of May? Yesterday? Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's, wow. it's, in other words, these are not old. This is a brand new tour code, and he ran three wow. of the codes. And uh, and I'll read you the wording and the phrases from each one, and then uh, maybe I'll comment. I'll, I'll go ahead and do all three of them instead of stopping on each one. I'll go ahead and do all three of them, and uh, then let y'all comment if you will. But uh, the first matrix has the words number one, Obama Gate, number two, Nadler, <laughs> number. Huh? Hmm. Number uh-huh. three, Trump. Number four, the presidents, plural. Number five, UFO. Number six, we'll find the thief. Number seven, do the crime. Number eight, Flynn. Number nine, Barr. Number ten, Russian. Number eleven, hatred. Number twelve, indicted. Now that's the first matrix. He ran another matrix following that, and this is the words. This is really intriguing, Steve. Number one, Obama indictment. Number two, president. Number three, Clinton. Number four, Persia. Number five, Comey. Number six, Kerry. Number seven, General. Number eight, W. Barr. Number nine, Money. Number ten, Barack. Now, get the last two here. Number 11, the Nephilim, Fallen. Number 12, UFO. And then he went ahead and ran a third quick code, and these go one through seven here. Number one, indicted, guilty Obama. Number two, conspiracy. Number three, Comey. Number four, Flynn. Number five, mask, no, which uh, Barry writes beside it, unmask. Uh, Number six, Mueller. Number seven, Army. So if you guys want to comment, that's an incredible code that he's Ran involving Obama Gate. What do you wow. think, Steve? Well, I don't know. I, you know, it's just uh, pretty. It's hard to believe that all of that stuff can can come out and it doesn't have any meaning. You know, it's it's got to all tie back together somehow, some way. It's all of these things are coming out right now. Yet at the same time, I mean, people are saying, "Well, he's being indicted now." How? Well, he's he's been he's not been president for three years, you know, but why is he getting this uh, stage to make this speech? Exactly. So, you know, what is going on with this, you know? Well, it's curious though about the fallen angels and UFOs, which would kind of indicate, well, we've known that the uh, so-called aliens, we know they're fallen angels in a book of Enoch claims they're shapeshifters. They can take on any form they want, and we get back to, to Maitreya, and uh, Maitreya hasn't been seen since Obama's been around, and nobody really knows what that big scar on his head is. Now, I read an article where they say it's a, a ritual of some uh, of some type, uh, but I've also wondered exactly who Obama is, because we know his uh, birth certificate's a fake. There's, there's no question about it. But Obama's still running around. Hillary Clinton's still running around. All of the deep state uh, nasty people that violated all kinds of laws are still around. And uh, it makes you wonder, well, you know, you hear on Hannity or... Or some of these other people, well, next week they're going to be indicted. Next week we're going to see Hillary in uh, uh, down there in Cuba at Guantanamo in an orange jumpsuit. And that's been handed out now for, what, two, almost three years from uh, people that this is going to happen tomorrow. And I personally think it's all sleight of hand and it's all a deception. 
And what is Obama doing right from the White House almost? And and you may remember, guys, that when Obama or when uh, Trump would go visit heads of state in various countries, Obama went right behind him, which is totally illegal. He's a private citizen at that point. And uh, mm-hmm. so it, there's got to be something really, really nefarious going on behind the scenes. It ties directly when, uh, back when, to Obama. Go ahead. Yeah, when Larry mentioned uh, Clinton in the, in the Torah Code, uh, it reminded me of something that's happening tomorrow together with the speech. There's a conjunction of the moon Venus and Jupiter, it's supposedly going to be forming a, like a smiley face. The, the, oh, really? uh, the, uh, cre- the crescent moon and Venus and Jupiter are, are forming like a smiley face in the well, heavens. Venus, Venus is a, uh, you know, the morning star. Bright, my, yeah, the Which, bright morning star and then the, the king planet Jupiter. Yep, that be but, the Lord. But the connection that, that I saw, someone else shared a video about that, but I had seen it also, was the, um, the, the fact that uh, the last time that happened, the smiley face between the, the moon, Venus, and Jupiter, it's happened before. The last time it happened was December 1st, 2008. And I looked up what happened on that day, and uh, you wouldn't believe it, but Hillary Clinton was named Secretary of State by Barack Obama on December 1st, 2008. Huh. At the same conjunction. Yeah, the same conjunction that happened when, when Barack Obama made uh, Hillary Secretary of State is the same conjunction that's happening tomorrow on during his speech. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I noticed he picked 8 o'clock, and the number 8 has, has some connotations. But here's something else that's kind of interesting, and I'd like you guys to comment on it. Obama okay. is the 44th president, right? Uh-huh. And he's 4 times 11, or 44, or 411. 411. You may, uh, I, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Maybe not. We had two comets cross over the head of Satan, uh, the star Elgol. The first one was Hayakataki, and the second one was Heobop. And they formed a perfect cross over the head of Satan. Each one on a four. 11. Now, that's not by accident, and that's a message. Is it a message of who he is? That's a 44th president. He's got 411 tied up all over the place. In fact, I found out, I did a little research on it. He was elected president or uh, on 4, uh, it actually was a 11 uh, 4 when he first came to office. Four. Uh-huh. That's a four. Well, that's a 411. It's just in reverse, which is what they always do. It's either upside down or reverse. And the other trick these people do is they use different calendars to try to fool people. As you found out, like right. Ramadan is actually a 923. Well, who would suspect yeah. that? So <laughs> this is a 923. Remember, that's when the Pope and Obama shook hands. In Washington. And, my, and then they went and, up and to the num- United Nations to do this uh, um, Agenda 21 30, 50 launch. So it all ties together. And my, my number is 222, and tomorrow on the Hebrew calendar is 222. It's the 22nd day of the second month. Really? Yeah, well, that's yeah, my number, quite- Steve Fletcher. <laughs> Here are some things that happened on 411. They say on 32. Now I don't know about the dates because of you know ancient history, but they say Passover was fulfilled by Jesus Christ April 11th. April 11th, 2014, Passover 
and the year World War I begins. April 11, 1933, Passover and Hitler passes first anti-Semitic laws on that very Passover. April 11, 1996, was Hayakataki, and April 11, was uh, Hail Bob that formed that cross over Satan's head, and that clearly a message that Jesus is coming, and that his work on the cross is basically complete. Now, the last comment was in 1997, that's 23 years ago. The 23, as you probably know, is death. That's what the number means. Yeah. So <laughs> this all ties together incredibly it's inter- uh, it's intricate it's ways. It's Go interesting ahead. that right now on Netflix, we've got, uh, they just put out the program, The Last Dance, about the final season of the Bulls when they were together with Michael Jordan and the last dance, number 23, death, the dance, the dance of death. Wow. So they're yeah. doing all this uh, coded and in secret so that people will not see it. <clears throat> and I've often wondered, you know, the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, he likes to hide stuff. And it's the honor of kings to search it out, he says. So what you've brought forward with this 1260, 1290, 1335, uh, there was a fellow over in Indian, um, Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was a long, long time ago. In fact, I read his book. I'm from, I think, 20... I, I'm from there. That's, that's my hometown, Minneapolis, you know. Yeah, that was Bethel University. I don't yeah. know if you know if it's still there. But anyway, he wrote a book, and he said what you're saying. You you have to add these together, uh, the 1260, the 1290, the 1335, and their their whole uh, concept of what has been preached, of course, is wrong, and it's kind of like the four beasts of Daniel. You know, it's ancient Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, and all that. When in reality, it isn't that at all. And the fourth beast is the United Nations. There's only one, uh, I guess you could call it an entity, because the UN, it says in the the scriptures, is diverse or different than anything ever seen before. And it rises up. And this fourth beast, is an organization, and it do, it's it's really nothing in the world has ever seen it before, because what it it's just an organization, and it makes treaties with the nations, and the nations cede their sovereignty over to the United Nations, and that's what gives it its power. And Obama at one time even mused about. Running for the United Nations, didn't he, Larry? You remember that? Oh yeah, he he at one time was considering uh, the job uh, that the guy that has it now, like Guterres or something like that. Uh, he was going to possibly take that uh, when he ended his presidency, uh, but that didn't happen. So uh, yeah, that that was considered from what I read. Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, what else have you found, Steve? You've done so much research. You're way above my pay grade. I have to watch your your documentaries a dozen times just to get all the stuff you're saying. Well, remember what you were talking about in Isaiah 14 where it talked about Lucifer as the king of Babylon? Yes. And so this ties in with Revelation chapter 17 when it talks about the uh, Babylon being destroyed in, in one hour. Uh, yep. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. And it it goes on in verse 8, and it says, The beast that thou sawest was and is not shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, go into perdition, they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And herein is the mind which hath wisdom. 
Okay, and this connects to the, to the number of the beast. It says, he who has wisdom, let him count the number of the beast, right? Here is the right. mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. So here it explains that the eighth king, and you said that the Lucifer is described as the king of Babylon, mm-hmm. and you have showed over and over, whether people want to receive it or not, that Babylon is the United States. It's, it's connected to the United Nations. It's the capital of the United Nations. Yep. So whether it's, whether it's just the United States in and of itself, or it's the head of the United Nations still located within the United States, you have these eight kings that are kings of Babylon, okay? Right. And so if the, if the United States is Babylon, then here we have the connection to the sixth king, which was Obama, the seventh king, which has really been confirmed as Donald Trump, because he came in to power, he was 70 years, seven months, and seven days old, 777. Uh-huh. He, was born, he was born on a blood moon exactly 700 days before the birth of Israel. Yep. Okay. And his, his uh, ancestry, his grandmother was named Elizabeth Christ, right? So his, his family name is Trump of Christ, Right. And he's yeah. the seventh. It's a number of Jesus, 777, and um, the number of perfection. And the eighth king then is of the six. So here, you know, because we were watching Obama back in, what, 2013, 14, 15, 16, right? Then he, 2015, he was there. He was at the White House. He was with uh, the Pope. All of those things happened. And then he went out of office. He went out of office, mm-hmm. and everybody's like, there goes the prophecy of Steve Fletcher down the drain, right? And everybody's like, okay, well, anyway, and there's not only not only me, but there's a lot of people talking about Barack Obama, and it's, it's uh, so the, the big thing has always been he's got to come back. He's got to come back. Well, here's the biblical scenario of the eighth beast who was of the original, he was the sixth, then the seventh came in, and then the eighth, who was of the original seven. So it's the eighth king who was already once was, he comes back, right? Yep. And it's connected to Babylon, the king of Babylon. Do they start that with Carter and uh, in Israel? They started with Carter, and he he made the big deal in 19 – there was a big deal with Israel made with Carter. But then also at Obama's inauguration, it was – it was all of them present. It was Carter. The only one that wasn't there was Reagan. It was uh, Carter, Bush Sr., Clinton, Bush Jr., and, yep. and then Obama, and then Obama and, and Reagan was not there. He he had passed on, but it was the the six kings were there together, and then Trump came in. He's the seventh, and then he's going to be just a short time. And now we see at this critical time, just before the thirteen hundred thirty five days, fourteen days before Pentecost, there's a revealing. You know, will this be the revealing? And that's what I'm sharing, and that's why I'm just saying to people, you know. Things are not as they seem. You can know the future, but you need to know where to look. Right, Larry yep. and uh, Stuart? Yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think so anyway, Larry. Yeah, well, I agree. Yeah, I, it, it's uh, it's amazing. And getting back to Obama, uh, I wish I could find it. Uh, it was Glazerson ran a bunch of codes about Obama. And one of the things they ran was 
about Obama and Hillary, and it was a, an abomination of the Lord, or the Lord thought it was an abomination. So isn't that kind of odd that the Glazerson is one of the leading, isn't he not, Larry, one of the leading uh, Torah code experts in the world? Yeah, he's actually, he lives in Israel and uh, up there with uh, Yahoo Rips and, and a few of the other ones. I mean, he's one of the top guys. So when he comes up with this, and this is a Torah code, because that's where they work, their work, uh, it it comes to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and an Obama nation. Well, all you got to do is put Obama and nation together, and what do you have? An abomination. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, it can't be by accident. I mean, how many, again, how many signs do we need before people even begin to wake up? Now, the other thing that... Um I think we could uh, talk about mm -hmm. is this uh, is this Kaduri prophecy because we were talking about the fact that they were going to be doing their government on the 13th. Yes, they moved of, it of May. They moved it again. Okay, so then then I'm I'm getting feedback on my pages. See that this can't be the revealing of the Antichrist because that was moved back. But, see, the thing is, with the wording of, of Kaduri, when he said that at the end of a time when Israel had elections and no government, when we, when yep. we kind of see the end of, that, of the, the end of that cycle, then the next Sabbath, the Messiah will be revealed. And Kaduri was a Messianic Jew. He knew Jesus Christ as the Messiah. He revealed Jesus Christ as the Messiah. There's a book written about him, the, the rabbi who met Messiah. And he mm -hmm. gave the message to the people. So is he talking about, see, and this is why we have to be kind of open-minded about the possibilities. Is he talking about the, the Messiah of the Jews, which would be the Antichrist because they rejected Jesus Christ? Or is he talking well, that about the Messiah that he or would he or is he talking about the Messiah that he met, which is Jesus Christ? Well, here we have a, a kind of a situation where okay, let's say two weeks from now is Pentecost. It okay. is a Sabbath. It falls on Saturday this year, May thirtieth. The end, okay, well, I would look at the last day. Number one, the 1,335 days falls on May 30th. Pentecost is celebrated from May 28th to May 30th in Israel. But as it says in the book of Acts, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, right? So we would look yep. at the very, like the end of there, the end portion of the full fullness of coming of, of Pentecost, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so next uh, the 30th is Saturday and I'm thinking okay and I don't know they say they postpone this to, to Sunday but I'm yeah. wondering if it's going to be postponed again until that final week before Pentecost like, like maybe they'll decide on the 24th or the 25th or the 26th of, of May mm -hmm. finalize finalize the government so I'm just wondering, will they will they do that on – because the following Saturday doesn't really line up with anything that I can see. So I'm just kind of wondering. So right now that kind of is still in play, but not for this weekend because they have not finalized that portion of that, right? Yep, yep. But, yeah, if, they do it, uh... but if they do it – but if they do it the what? following week – then it would apply to the coming of the true Messiah on Pentecost. Now, wow, huh? So we're right there. Yeah, if they did it, like you say, they got it on the 17th, they claim. So then the following Sabbath would be the 23rd, which is interesting. And uh, then if they delayed it again, so sometime... 25th, 26th, 27th, somewhere in there, 
Yeah, then the following Sabbath would be Saturday. When is Pentecost as as a day of the week? When is May? It's Saturday. Let's see. Let me May look 30th. at it. The thirtieth. That's a Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Saturday. So that could be. He, it may be that that's exactly when Messiah will be revealed, and it would be Jesus Christ Himself, because that would be the taking out of the church. Remember, yeah. Israel says that they under they know they're not saved. Harvest is over, and we're not saved. Mm. Well, how mm. would they know they're not saved unless something momentous around the world happened? And, and that goes saved. along with that Ken <laughs> Peters prophecy. And uh, he, he said he saw, the Lord showed him. And this was when, I guess, when he was pretty much a kid. And, and uh, the, I don't know, are you familiar with Ken Peters? Uh, somewhat, yeah, somewhat. I haven't really followed directly his prophecies, but I've heard a lot about him, yes. Well, he had a vision, he claims, and the Lord showed him the tribulation period. And it began uh -huh. with uh, things were normal, like every day. You know, it's like any other day. And uh, all of a sudden, it, it the, the graves opened up with a loud explosion all over the world. It was instantaneous. The uh, saints all came out of the graves. They were all wearing white. And then they vanished. And then I guess one could say all hell broke loose. And people were very, very... Cons they, he said they were mourning like a mother. They'd lost their mother. Well, that's kind of like mm -hmm. what the Lord said, isn't it? They shall mourn. Uh, anyway, then uh, the power went out for about three weeks. Because this is, I think this is a plasma event. Because of the way the Lord said it. I will come as lightning. Well, lightning is plasma. And uh, it's a global plasma event which evidently knocks the power out all over the world and uh, then he said that uh, when they finally get things back under control uh, that's when the Antichrist comes on TV and starts reassuring people now as far as I know you know it says that uh, if it is Obama he blasphemes those that are in heaven well He's got to, they've got to have some excuse as to why these people left. And the excuse, as far as I can find out, is that they were holding humanity back. They were not evolving. And uh, therefore, the Creator had to remove them because they were holding everything back. And he wanted to, humanity to ascend, which, of course, is all New wow. Age doctrine. What do you think? Sounds pretty interesting. Very possible. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just, what do you think, Larry? Well, it sounds interesting. And, and by the way, uh, you know, I've been watching really, really closely this Israeli government. And for one thing, it's not a normal government. You know, you talked about Kaduri and he, the way he's talked about the government. This is not a normal Israeli election at government. No one won the election. This time, uh, it's a, they're making a deal or a covenant, I guess you could say, between Benny Gantz and Netanyahu. And yep. it was supposed to be, they, they were actually supposed to have been sworn into office Wednesday. But the Pompeo trip to Israel suddenly delayed that, and they were looking at Thursday. But because of from what I've been watching and looking at, because of uh, of uh, fighting, inner, you know, inside fighting in the groups that make up the Netanyahu government that he's trying to form, he was not able to corral them enough to to actually go into a covenant to be sworn in with Gantz, and so it's still up in the air. Uh, it's set now for maybe Sunday, may or may not be. It may be later on. Uh, Netanyahu's having still having trouble getting his government together. Uh, now he's supposed to actually uh, be sworn in first and be the uh, the prime minister 
uh, and then Gantz will follow. But what's odd is, uh, to me, when I was looking at that, and you know, if what you're saying is true, and where we basically are, uh, and I know that uh, Stuart was told by the Lord, I believe, that uh, Netanyahu would go through the tribulation leading Israel, then that means that for the next number of months, if, if if the 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 government, which is not a government, holds together, Netanyahu will still control Israel for that period of time. It's really strange. Yeah, I kind of went through what you did, Steve, uh, about 20 years ago. I was watching TV, and Netanyahu was on maybe 25 years ago now, or even 28 wow. years ago. Um, uh-huh. He was Netanyahu was on TV, and I just knew, and that's got to be the Holy Spirit. Uh, this man that I was watching will be leading Israel into the tribulation. Well, then everybody laughed at me because uh, Netanyahu disappeared. But guess what? Like Obama, he's back. He came came back, yeah. Yeah, kind of like an Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. And (laughs) he's, I don't know. And we got all these other signs that people, HR 6666, and I find that fascinating with what you found on the dating of uh, the 666. Yeah, from the day that the World Health Organization declared a pandemic on March 11th to May 16th is also 66 days. And then we have uh, 14 days to Pentecost and then another 66 days to Obama's birthday. So what I see there is like a double confirmation on the 80 days, 66 plus 14, and then we've got 14 plus 66, twice in that. And, you know, so basically right now, because of the pandemic, this is their perfect storm for them to, to deceive the people into believing that it's for their protection, it's for their safety, the government's working on their behalf, Here's the plan. We're going to get everybody back to a new normal. Even in Mexico, they're talking about a new normal. They're not talking about back to normal. Even uh-huh. in Mexico, they said, the, the, it's, here's the plan to bring Mexico back to the new normal. And uh, the new normal is the, the vaccine passports and the digital IDs and, the, you know, the mark of the beast and just the total control. And even the, the social distancing that has been put in place has allowed all of the updated computer systems to get the uh, names and faces of the people because when you have people crowded in, the, the, those computers don't work right. Those, yep. those camera programs don't work correctly. So they have this plan to get everybody into the database. They need the social distancing to take place for them now everybody's in line separate they can focus on each person individually yeah and and there's so much disbelief out there about what's going on i wrote an article uh not very long ago and it was about uh, covid19 and how it brought the world to a standstill and the last time we checked There had been 488,452 views on that one article. And when you look at some of the comments and how nasty these people are, uh, I always view as nasty and anger as it pricks their conscience in some way. And you've uh, aroused them a little bit. Uh, people evidently are very, very comfortable in their comfort zone. They don't want to think. They don't want to ask questions. I mean, this is amazing. This went worldwide, guys, and very few asked any questions at all. They just accepted everything they were told. What do you think about that, Steve? I, I, I don't understand what's happened to the people of the world, let alone America. Well, it's just step by step. I mean, you you accept the 
order to put on a mask, you accept the order to stay at home, you accept the order to take the vaccine, you accept it, you know, it's just step by step. And as long as the people believe that the government is really working on their behalf, they have no reason to doubt it. But here we, what, this is the importance of this revelation of understanding who the Antichrist is, because he's the one that has a program that is in his name, and the, the prophecy was he's going to come back. The prophecy was he's the one who's going to bring forth the mark of the beast. And yep. now, in the middle of everything, here he is, right back. And so, what is he going to say tomorrow? What is going to be revealed tomorrow? And that is the importance of, of seeing. Things have to come down to the fact of, okay, it's not just a world government. The, the Bible talks about the Antichrist not as a system, but as a man. No, it's a man. A man of sin. It's a man. Yep. So, so it's got to be connected. The revealing is not about, I mean, we know the mark of the, the beast system is here, but what the people don't know, who's the guy behind the curtain, you know? Who's the yep. Wizard of Oz? Yep. You know? So <laughs> I think that's what's got to happen, you know? And I think that's what's the only thing lacking now. And to me, that seems like that, if that happens tomorrow, and I, I do see that that somehow needs to happen tomorrow, then that would be our 14-day warning uh, to Pentecost. And as in the days of Noah, there were seven days and, and 14 days. And I think that also ties in with the, the two birthing rituals, you know, somehow. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and what? Go ahead, Larry. What? I was just going to say what might be interesting also is to see what phrase he might drop tomorrow because of the fact, remember, when he was president, he addressed America and he said America is no longer a Christian nation. And then in 2020, America, all of the churches in the the entire country of America were closed, and they're still not all open. A few have opened up, and, but during 2020, all the churches were closed down. And, it, it, you know, I kind of wonder what might he drop tomorrow in that speech. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember a few week, a few months ago, the big craze was Kanye West, right? And yes. his uh, al his album came out, or that one song came out, and the big thing was closed on Sunday. Remember that? Oh, yeah. that's right. Closed on wow. Sunday. Then yeah, you know, not long program. after, not long after that, the church is all closed down. Yeah. Yep. It's all programmed. Yeah. Uh, we got about two minutes left. Any closing things you'd like to say, uh, Steve? Well, this has been a wonderful show. We'll have to have you back. It's, it's, there's just so much going on. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, the the, uh, the big question right now is why is Obama getting this uh, nationwide, worldwide stage? What's he got planned? Is he going to be making a call to the new generation? Is he going to be making a call to the Muslims on their night of power? Um, something's going on here, and um, I think people need to be aware you know, if they have doubted up until now that Obama could be the Antichrist, you know, what if he comes out tomorrow and makes a clear-cut statement that makes it quite obvious he's the one behind the curtain? Barack Obama is the Wizard of Oz, you know. And um, yeah. people people need well, to be aware of where we are and how close we are to Pentecost. Remember the prophecy of Daniel, 70 weeks are determined. If we go from 1949, when they actually had their official government formed, and have, have that as the starting, then the end of the 70th year is 2020, as they turn 71. Okay, so 70 weeks are determined, and that could be very well pointing us to the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, 2020, also tied in with the 1,335 days from the Feast of Trumpets in 2016. So well, we're very you. close to the coming of Christ. Yep. 
Well, thank you, Steve, for coming on. Thanks, Larry. And uh, we got to close down here. I guess we got about eight seconds left. So anyway, thanks a lot, everybody, for listening. And uh, we're going to have Steve back. This is fascinating stuff. Anyway, good night, heads up, and uh, be listening to what's going on. Good night, everyone. Good night. God bless. Thanks for having me. Yep, no problem. All right, Stuart. We'll talk. We'll talk later.